Hi, my name is Brian Collins. I'm also a couple of who's deaf, and I'm happy to be here for the Halloween 4 panel. Um, and that was just uh, an accident of someone 
taking the wrong mask off the truck. But um, I, I don't know quite how it was designed. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you guys know what that is. Uh, no, actually, we, you know, they put the mask on, and you have no, <coughs> nothing you do about which one they're going to use. And so uh, when you're inside the mask, you don't know what it looks like, and what they choose is what they choose. So uh, we have very little to say about what they look like.
really what we need to talk about that each other does. <laughs> so I put it together like the origin word and the Louise, you know, you know, I've been in a hot tub or something. Now it is, it's a great job. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, Eric, were you, were you aware of Michael Myers when you were playing Young Michael Myers? Did you have any, like, did you, have you seen a movie or something else? Yeah, so I, I, yeah, I actually know about some movies. I didn't know the character by the name of Michael Myers. I knew the killer in the white mask. Um, I don't know if I saw Halloween one at the time. I definitely saw Halloween two at the hospital. <laughs> so when I got the audition, my mom was like, hey, you're auditioning for I mean, Halloween. And I'm like, I, I don't know what the name is. So she kept thinking, like, I should know. Um, and she's like, oh, the killer in the white mask. I'm like, oh, cool. Right? Um, so then, like, when they're like, you get to be the young killer. Like, that's, that's how I'm on. Yeah, I knew who it was by design, but not by name. Uh, Dwight, the uh, Jamie's Clown costume is sort of iconic. I've seen a couple of people yeah. up there. I've seen plenty of people. Work. There's another one. Uh, <laughs> did, you, uh, did you have any involvement in the creation? Or the I did. We, that one? Yeah, we uh, looked everywhere for that with the head of the wardrobe department. Um, must have probably been 20 or 30. And, um, uh, finally, you know, we had the, the reference to the first movie that we were trying to get to. So we, we really wanted to make Halloween 4 like a proper homage to Halloween 1, and the movie structured in a way to really take advantage of that. But um, there was a lot of time and effort that went into that. Tom, what was your, uh, what was your most difficult uh, stunt or kill in the film, you know, shooting wise, if you remember? Uh, <clears throat> well, I don't know that it was really difficult. It might be interesting. Challenge. Or, uh, yeah. Not challenge, I guess. Be well, probably the most interesting was to use a double cover shotgun and impale the girl on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about bringing up you, you, That was one of your kills? Yeah, that was that was probably the last of your life. Uh, okay. and, uh, I, I didn't do a lot of on camera killing. I was only in the first part of the movie. I did mine, uh, where I killed the, uh, the uh, mechanic in the, in the uh, garage. You don't actually see the jam, the, the rods removed, but you knew I did it. Uh, I had fun driving the, the tow truck and trying to, try to get right down Loomis. That was kind of cool. A lot of those events, <laughs> a lot of those events you faced, and you've been able to announce the Universal Mail. I would ask, let's talk about the maze. I mean, uh, did they, how uh, you went through it? Did, did you get to see it before it opened, or was that? I did. I had a little preview um, before it opened, and, you know, just seeing the Penny's Diamond really was the main thing for us. And it was it was a, a wonderful recreation, and they picked, I thought, excellent moments for the film to highlight. And uh, it was interesting to see it some 30 years later, because, you know, it's still such a, an interest in some of those like that. <laughs> and they had the white hair, Michael. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had many, many Michaels. <laughs> have you, have you, have you, your mothers, have you been through it yet? No? No? Have you guys? Yep. Yeah. Very yeah. Um, for, uh, you mentioned Lewis briefly. For those who actually worked with him, do you guys have any good memories of, of John Lennon? He was a guy who was not a young man when we worked with him, and uh, he would get tired about four or five in the afternoon. And so we ended up putting all of his work early in the day to get him when he was his most fresh. But he's a great collaborator, um, a great uh, professional, and uh, really was, was gave it everything he had. Although I do remember him, you know, just struggling with those twelve-hour days. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like professionals who work, he was just a great actor. It was kind of neat to work with him. And, and I just remember being always a, a, a real pro and was always prepared. And just a really nice guy. Yeah, he works. He's a Now, Eric, you, you, we all know you as young Michael, but you have other parts of the movie, is that correct? Or are you yeah. shooting? Or what? Yeah, yeah, I'm a little much of a So, I was cast as an extra. So, um, there are a 
hard to be since I've been away. The, the very beginning of the two cent school bus. They told us the two cent school bus. This is how they directed us, but you're running a school. Um, I'm also one of the kids outside of Vincent that have been establishing shop at Vincent Drugs. Um, and obviously, the, the shoebox scene, we took the shoebox and see some pictures of, of the kids. Um, Easter eggs. Um, Sasha, you guys were working with Ellie Cornell, who's uh, most of the scenes are obviously with her. Did you guys know each other beforehand? Did you get to kind of rehearse, hang out? Um, no, I, I didn't know her. I actually went to, uh, I went to high school with Kathleen. And so I felt like I had a friend for an ally with me. And then, you know, I met Ellie. And we, we really bonded. We had a lot of fun together. We, you know, we were in a hotel. We you know, were young. We were in a hotel in Utah together. We would rehearse together. I remember we would, you know, we'd come up with these concepts of my like, novel. Oh, and we came up with my dying, you know, the whole the dying scene. I came to Dwight with Ellie, and I'm like, what is, here's a book. Like wrote, like, wrote her, like, I'm willing to fall on the sword for you. And she came up with this idea, and then we went to Dwight, and we're like, how about this, Dwight? And he's like, yeah, I can sell that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, we were really, uh, we were in it together. We were, we, we were inspired together. We were, worked, we worked well together. And he's like, wow, good luck. Dwight, when you're, when you're, Tackling a, a known movie monster like Myers, and then the next movie, Phantom. Um, how do you find that balance between sort of living up to? Thank you. For being here. I like that. Um, how do you find that balance between you know living up to the character that's been established versus you know you also have to get your own stamp in there? Well, I I thought I was doing a thriller. I mean, I tried to put horror movie out of my mind because I didn't want to get caught in tropes or in cliches or kind of found moments that might have been borrowed from other movies. So I think the trick to making Halloween for Chris <coughs> was I was trying to do it really as a silence of the land, really as a police thriller with an escape convict. For me growing up, the, the great boogeyman uh, of all of my childhood was escape convicts. That's what we, <laughs> that's what we were always afraid of. So um, the idea that that Michael had escaped and was coming to town unstopped, to me, was enough of a monster that I didn't have to, it's just me now, but I didn't have to overthink the Michael of it because I, I wanted to, I know that what's scary is when they care about the characters, which is Sasha and Ellie and Danielle and everybody brought this real human element. If you care about the characters and then you put them in, in, in genuine danger, now, all the horror beats are going to work. The, the action or the violence or that's all going to be fine. It's the other stuff that you have to really, really pay attention to. So story ready, you know, filmmaking stuff. Kind of to me, it's, it's, uh, it's script first and then casting. And if you get those two right, then you, you're 90% you're on the way to a great movie. You can never really fix a bad script. And you can never overcome bad casting. So when we had those two things, a script that was great and a, and a cast that was not only game, but they were really good, then my job was to do, I thought I was making a thriller, and I didn't want to get, I didn't want to overthink my character, because these guys all brought like, you know, George, Tom, the, you know, the stunt people, they, they brought Michael, I needed to bring him. And you mentioned, uh, I don't want to say bad script, but uh, the earlier script. Do you remember anything from those elements that? <laughs> it did, it did, didn't, I mean, no offense to her. <laughs> it didn't work. It just, uh, it was a pastiche of exactly what I'm talking about. There was a bunch of horror beats. You know, they were what we call set pieces. And, but, a, but a set piece uh, does not work unless it's in context of audience particular involvement. So you have to earn have to earn, you know, every time you put somebody in harm's way, you've got to feel like earn that. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you guys for a bit. If you guys have any questions for these guys, uh, yeah, right here. Just wanted to say, yeah, uh, it's my favorite sequel, so thank you very much. Really appreciate it. 
Uh, let's get Bucky out of the way real quick. Uh, who came up with that legendary character? I just uh, the, the question for those who did it uh, was about Bucky. Who came up with Bucky? That, that was Alan. That was Alan McCullough, the writer. We knew, look, we had a, a plot problem, which is we had to take that and you know, throw it in the darkness. We had, we had to shut the power down. So when we you know, drove the tow truck, we, we caught the telephone lines on fire. That's how we shut down the telephone grid. So this is way, this is very pre-digital, pre-digital world. So we had to shut down the electrical power. So that's where we came up with the idea of, of Michael throwing poor, some poor guy into the power grid and shutting us down the town. And then he, uh, I don't know, he had something from his childhood, some guy in the <laughs> <laughs>
was his son, was it Bob, or one of the um, nurses at the hospital? Or was it the guy who got killed in the field, the number one? Like, who was his son? Well, I, I'm going to leave you frustrated on this because I, <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. Um, Alan would know. I wish he was here. Alan didn't know either, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked him at the screening that, uh, a couple months ago at the screen fest, and uh, he doesn't know. So, Al's son, whoever he is, make the rest of peace. <laughs> <laughs> He defer to you. I'm just going to keep going back and forth. Uh, uh, yeah, right here. No, we, we, we started over, um, so I, I, I don't remember anything about that one. Yeah. What makes this movie great for me is the characters. I mean, they're fleshed out. You know, Brady, uh, Ellie's character was great, you know, and, uh, but my question is, that epic rooftop scene, how many takes did you guys have over there? I mean, that was one of my favorite moments, you know, like, I'm assuming you guys didn't get it on the first try. <laughs> no, it, was, it, it turned out to be a lot uh, kind of more uh, scary than we thought it would be, because we built the roof on the ground. Uh, so if you can imagine the eave or the gutter being at, at uh, ground level, it was still 20 feet high when it pitched the roof. And the uh, actors, of course, were surrounded uh, by some people at all times. So someone, and it was had been very wet, so that tile was in fact very slippery. And uh, there were the, you know, Ellie, they were struggling with getting up, even though they were only, even though we weren't on a roof, we were on the ground, it was still very high. And I think what part of what makes that sequence terrifying uh, is that it was it was very difficult. I mean, once Ellie puts Jamie on her back and is trying to get back, she, she fell, she slid, and we had to catch her. Um, and then when George comes you know, over, I don't know how George managed, but it was extremely slippery. And um, so I, I think part of why that works is there was a, a, a kind of a reality to it for all of us. We wanted to be safe, but it was, it was, a, it was a bit uh, difficult. Just a quick question about the opening sequence. It's like one of the best in all of Halloween. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, shooting where it was shot, 
what was your yeah, idea? Yeah. Um, I was about halfway uh, through the script with Adam. Uh, he mentioned his name, I wish he was here. Uh, and uh, I, I suddenly, we're doing all this Halloween stuff, and I, and I had grown up with Halloween, so I knew my experience of it. But I suddenly thought to myself, what is Halloween exactly? Like, what is it really? And so we went back uh, to the library and started pulling out books of uh, New England mythology and archetypes of, it's, you know, it's an end, har end of harvest mythology. And uh, from an agrarian world where life was really harsh and, you know, the dark winter of maybe six months was coming and people were scared. So there were all these paintings and etchings and wood carvings and drawings from New England of scarecrows and farm implements and tractors and dying uh, fallow fields. And uh, we kept seeing all these photographs and thought, oh my God, that's what Halloween is. It's, it's not just going out to get candy, it's the beginning, it's the beginning of winter and not in a good way. So uh, we interpreted those images, we went out to some fields outside of Salt Lake City and then created that atmosphere. It was springtime, it wasn't fall. But we brought the foreign houses, so we brought the pumpkins and the tractors and then built that sequence. But I mean, the long-winded answer is it came out of a, a real interest in what the harvest uh, festival of Halloween is and what its origins were. Yeah, right back there. Uh, I heard a couple different accounts of the reshoots that added more and why they happened from got a PG-13 to just stop the hot wanted it. Can you talk about adding some more, more reshoots and uh, when and where was decided to do that? We did shoot uh, three things. Um, uh, we reshot the attack in the van, uh, which is my form the thumb, because the version of it we did was not successful initially. And then we had to go back and remake the prosthetic. It's a very simple device. It's just a retractable thumb. <coughs> But it has to be built exactly right for that effect. And then when we thought, okay, we have to reshoot this to make it work anyway. We also owed two or three shots for the, the sequence we were discussing the rifle. Uh, we didn't have enough uh, the pieces we needed, so we were going to do that. And then we thought, well, wait a minute, we're here. Let's enhance that shot of the, the red veins, the neck coming off. That was um, enhanced. Um, and I forget what the third piece was, but well, it was Kelly. So yes, we did go back. We sort of began with redoing the inside of the emergency vehicle, and then thought, well, we're here, and we have like, a couple days of shooting, and then we started with that. Actually, I just thought, can you, uh, we talked before about costume design. Who designed the cops do it by the book? <laughs> that is in the script. Oh. Yeah, it's in the script. I don't know who executed the teaching. <laughs> but it's in the script. So we have Alan to thank for that. Yeah, right here. I always thought you did a phenomenal job. There was a big gap between part two, the last time we saw Myers, and then when 88 came around. And I noticed a lot of earlier 80s films had a certain grit because of the type of cameras that were used. And by the time you got to it, the cameras seemed a little bit more polished, yet you still retained a lot of the strength that, of what I loved in the earlier films. Uh, usages of like alleyways, fog creeping down over the lawns on the streets. Uh, that scene where the ambulance was in the very, very beginning with the fog creeping in. I just thought you did an amazing job because a lot of other series, if there's a big gap like that, they lose something. I thought you guys just picked up right up where part two off, so I just wanted to well, good. One thing we did, um, both as a practical and an artistic matter, is, is that we uh, filmed it with one camera, which even then in 88 was becoming unusual because most films are filmed with multiple cameras. And uh, when you film with one camera only, um, you have more control over the image and you're not making compromises for what they call C or C camera. And I think that uh, by shooting on film and shooting one shot at a time, we were able to have more control over the look of the movie. And uh, uh, Peter Collins had shot that movie. Uh, we had gone actually to film school together and so had worked together on uh, my first
first film, we, we, so we, we had collaborated quite a bit. And uh, I, I am a big believer in shooting one camera. So for those of you who can't afford three cameras, don't worry about it, you're better off with one. <laughs> <laughs> I got time for a couple more, so uh, yeah, right here. I uh, just want to say uh, I love Halloween Ford. It's like one of my favorite series. Um, I kind of wish Brady would have had a better like fight team. My goal think that was really cool. Uh, my question is, uh, what was the purpose of recasting Michael? You know, going to George later in the film and all. That that was a political issue that's over my head, and I hate to put my toe in that water. <laughs> that was done uh, in another world. I'll have to defer to Tom about that. No one told me a thing. I don't know. I don't know if it was. Uh, Size, or I, 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 I don't know. It's a very, it's kind of, it was a mystery, honestly, to me. I'm not trying to be coy, but I really don't know. I was just informed on the set that a change had been made, so it was, it was not a directorial uh, issue. May I help with this? I think Scott had a vision, different kind of vision. Michael Mara, how he can look, stature, a little bit of everybody. Too big, too small, whatever it was. It, it's one of my favorite lines, but it confuses to befuddle me. Is damn it, it's made out of metal. We're trapped in this house. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
the opioids were just clearing up the system. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it, me personally, I think it fell. I don't think he did it. Uh, I think it fell. And, uh, but I guess I'm entitled to an opinion since I'm directing it. Awesome. All right, one last one. So it's been cool to see both panels back to back because we were here, a lot of us were here for three. And Mustafa Akkad seems really cool. And he had this vision to go away from Michael Myers and then bring him back. I imagine it's really hard for the folks that are here speaking to the three, and I imagine it's hard for you as well. What could you share with us about that conversation when he brought you guys in and was like, hey, we're going to bring him back? Well, when I joined the, uh, the parade, this decision had been made already. So, uh, Mustafa and his team had already decided that this is what they wanted for to be. And uh, as I joined, that was already a done deal. So I wasn't quite confident in this decision. We just uh, so thrilled that, that there's so much interest continuing with this movie. And the maze is here, a Holland Court maze, has just been incredible. There, I went there and it was a two hour line <laughs> into this, this maze, which was very good. So, and we have to thank uh, AMC for running this movie <laughs> every year. It keeps it alive, I think. That, that, was it, your it really keeps the title alive. And the only reason it's still uh, so successful is because uh, of the actors. That's why I think I only have a little here, but, but uh, it's all about the actors. Any movie I have made, is, uh, they're successful when, when the actors work. It's really, it comes down to that. It is, I mean, this was my support. It was my introduction to the series. It's the first one I saw. It remains my favorite sequel. So I just want to uh, personally thank you all because, uh, yeah, I love it so much. And uh, happy 30th. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Go